whether you're an experienced cook or just learning how to cook, learning how to measure and practicing measuring accurately is the key to your success when cooking or baking. So today we're gonna to kind of go through some common ingredients and how to measure those ingredients accurately so that whatever you're making turns out to perfection. So first off, to measure accurately, there are some tools that you need to have. Um, these are called dry measuring cups and they're nested. They range all the way from a cup down to an eighth of a cup. And today we're gonna to be using um, various um, sizes of these measuring cups. These are for all solid um, or more solid ingredients. So these are a must. The other, one of the other tools you're gonna to need is a set of measuring spoons that range from a tablespoon on down to an eighth of a tablespoon. And today again, we're gonna be using variety of these spoons. These are different than um, the tablespoon and the teaspoon that you eat off of. So invest in a set of measuring spoons. The other things that you, you're going to need in your kitchen are a set of liquid measuring cups. And they come in a four cup, two cup, or one cup. And I also have an eight cup one that is really, really handy if you're having to measure a large volume. These are designed for liquids only and we will show you how to use those. The other tools that are really handy when measuring include a spoon, so you can um, dip things up, a straight edged knife so that you can level off, a rubber spatula that helps you get um, more sticky ingredients. Today we're gonna to be using peanut butter, but it'd be good for shortening as well. And a flour sifter. So these are all kind of important tools to help us measure accurately. So we're gonna start out with flour. And flour is um, an ingredient that you need to read your recipe and determine um, what your recipe wants you to do with that flour. Many recipes want you to um, measure it first and then put it through the sifter. Some recipes will have you just sift a bunch of flour and then measure from there. So today we're assuming that our recipe is calling for just um, flour we're going to measure and then sift. When you're measuring flour, you always kind of want to fluff it up to incorporate a little air into it and then spoon it lightly into our cup. You don't want to press it down. You don't want to pound your cup on the table to make it go down. You don't want to hit the side of your cup. You just want to layer it in there nice and lightly. Then you take your straight edge knife and you level that off. So this is accurately one half of a cup of flour. So now we will um, sift that flour. And what sifting does is incorporates air into the flour and makes it really light and fluffy. So many cake recipes, um, cookie recipes, those kind of things will call for you to sift your flour. It will also take out any lumps that may be in your flour from a little moisture. And it's okay if you pound your sifter down and get it in the bottom of that um, screen in the bottom. And you can see how light and fluffy our flour is. Our next ingredient that we will be measuring is sugar. Sugar is a little different. It's a lot denser than flour, and um, you can either scoop your um, cup into your flour con or sugar container and level it off, or you can take a spoon 
and spoon it into your um, cup. And this, you don't need to worry. It's not going to let you incorporate any air into it because it is so much denser. So either way is an acceptable way to measure sugar. And there's your half a cup of sugar. Our next ingredient is brown sugar. And for those of you who don't know, brown sugar is regular white sugar with um, molasses incorporated into it. There's light brown sugar and there's dark brown sugar. So your recipe will usually say what form of brown sugar that you are supposed to use. If it doesn't, it usually um, means you should be using light brown sugar. So with brown sugar, you're going to do it way differently than sugar. We're going to put some in our cup, and with the back of our spoon, we are going to press it into our cup as solid as we can get it. So the harder you can press it down, the better it will be. The true test of whether you have um, measured your brown sugar properly is when you tip it out and it holds its shape. And that's what you want brown sugar to do. That way, you have gotten the correct amount measured. So whenever measuring any of your spices or herbs, um, today we're going to measure salt. Measure it over another bowl, not the bowl you're mixing in or the kettle you're cooking in. And then you can just kind of shake it off to measure. Um, level it or you can use your straight edge. Never measure over your pot or your bowl because if your hand slips you may go from a teaspoon to a tablespoon of salt very very quickly. So, so that's the same if you're measuring pepper, cinnamon, um, whatever um, herb or spice you might be measuring. Baking soda and baking powder usually come in a container that you can just measure directly into, scrape it off, and you're good to go. Again, with your leveler, um, do that. Some baking powder and baking soda containers come with a self-leveling um, tool actually installed into the container. The next ingredient we're going to measure is vanilla, but this would go for any of your extracts, almond, for food coloring, anything liquid. So today we're going to just again do like we would do for our salt or spices and herbs, measure it over a container other than the one that we're cooking in or baking in, and that way you won't get any extra. For foods, the consistency of peanut butter or like solid shortening, uh, again, you will use our solid um, ingredient measuring cup. And this is where your um, rubber spatula comes in handy. You can um, fill your cup with the spatula or a spoon would work if you don't have the right kind of spatula. Again, you want these ingredients often get air pockets, as you can see. Um, so you want to make sure that you kind of push that ingredient down and make sure you get a really accurate measurement on those. If you're going to measure butter or margarine in the stick, as many of you would realize, this is measured um, by the wrapper. 
So you can just use a very, very sharp knife, and if your recipe calls for one tablespoon of butter, you can cut that off right there, and you will have an accurate measure. If you're using tub margarine or tub, you know, that kind of butter, then again, you would use your regular spoon with measuring spoon and um, another spoon and get that measured in there accurately. But for cube butter or cube margarine, that's the most um, easy way to do it. Lastly, we're going to measure some vinegar and I picked a, a colored liquid today so you could actually see. But this works for milk, water, um, juice, whatever liquid your recipe may be calling for, tomato juice. Today we're gonna to be using some cider vinegar. And on the sides of each of these glass measuring cups are um, measurements by a quarter cup, half cup, cup. So we're gonna use um, a half a cup of vinegar. And always, when measuring liquids, you need to get eye level with your measuring cup and pour until that reaches the half cup limit or what, whatever that mark might be that you're aiming for. So if you look at it from above, it's not accurate. So you need to get right down with your eyes level to that cup and you can see that we're, we're at a half a cup. So these are kind of the most common ingredients you would be using in your kitchens to create either baked goods or meals, or even for um, if you're going to try some food preservation, these are the, the tools you would need to measure accurately. So we hope by acquainting you with some of the tools and some of the measuring techniques that you too can measure up to be a good cook.